Hello again and welcome to the uh, Jumpers to Follow season, I say that every time, series, I mean episode four uh, of the series, so I'm looking forward to getting stuck into another uh, round of horses that I am looking forward to for the come, upcoming jump season. Uh, just a couple of quick points before we begin, uh, obviously thank you to everyone who's watched the series so far and, and subscribed to the channel, I do appreciate it. And uh, again, obviously the book is out. So if you like that, a lot of people have um, have got in contact with me and donated uh, to Hull for Heroes, the charity. Obviously, we've got about four weeks left now till Chepstow. So um, fingers crossed, I can get a little bit more um, a little bit more money in for the, the donation come the big season opener. So yeah, thank you to all those that have um, that have donated so far. Like I say, if you just drop a, a message to me on my uh, my Twitter, which is uh, at the uh, at Woods United Two. And I can get you a copy of that and you can get your donation into the pot. Right, fantastic. So we've obviously got quite a lot of good um, horses on the track so far uh, throughout this season. And uh, we're going to dive into a few more straight away in this episode four. So without further ado, the first one I'm going to talk about is one for Willie Mullins. Now, this is a horse called Mirazur West. And I'm uh, really excited for this horse. I'm not going to lie. He looks an, an exceptional talent. I'm really excited. Uh, he's a full brother to, uh, sorry, half brother to Fern. So he is a full brother, <laughs> full brother to Fernie Hollow. And if you do, if you go back and watch his point to point, it would have won by any sort of easiness. Um, but he unfortunately fell at the final uh, flight, uh, which was unlucky for him. But he would have gone on one quite convincingly. And um, he, he's gone for 160k. Now, JP has obviously snapped him up and he's going to go and train with Mullen Mullins now. 160k could look a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a bargain uh, come later on in the season, but he won a nice bumper back in March again, just just easy as you like. Didn't get out of first gear. A couple of nice types in behind him there. Uh, there's a horse called Mahone's Way for Henry de Bromed who uh, went for over 300k. He was back in uh, third, um, and he just looks a massive talent now. He looks to have so much uh, potential. I think sort of two miles. So I've put Supreme Ballymore there, but I'd see more as a Supreme horse myself. For later in the season, he just looks an unbelievably strong traveller. Can travel at pace and speed, and and if he can jump well, I can see him being a really, really strong hand for for, for JP. Although he has got a dream to share in the Supreme Market, I think in terms of Willie for Willie Mullins and that side of it, I think Merrick Mirza West is probably going to be one of the main uh, talking points for the Supreme. And I just think two mile novice hurdle season is going to be right up this guy's cup of tea. I think I think that's where he's going to go personally. Just looks just so 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 exciting, a five year old. I'm just really excited to see how he gets on in the coming season. Like I say, he's only had one run, but it just looks so impressive. So let's see how he gets on in the new season. Lovely. Fingers crossed for Mirazur West. Right. So I'm going to move on now to me, uh, a mare for this um, for this episode. And it's a mare called Dysa Enos. Now, Fergal O'Brien's got this one. And, he's, and, the, and her form there is obviously 1 1 1. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing her in the mayor's novice hurdle campaign. I think she's uh, she's going to go slightly under the radar with her being at not the well. She's obviously Fergal's a big big trainer over in the UK, but obviously you've got the when you look at the mayor's novice division, it's always your Mullinses and and things like that, and he does dominate quite a lot. But I'm excited for Dice Enos personally. And, and if you go through the form, she was a 95k purchase after a point to point, and she looked decent at Ludlow on a debut where she went on and won. Uh, quite convincingly, and we actually got quite an intriguing um, clash uh, for her second run over at Market Raisin, and she she come up against a horse called Queen's Gamble, who was obviously quite well touted at the time, having bolted up in a bumper at Cheltenham, and uh, everyone was tipping her to go well in the champion bumper. And although Dice Enos was getting weight that day, and know there was a lot of factors that potentially went against Queen's Gamble, she did put away quite convincingly, and she stayed on really strongly and, and sort of won going away. So I think people were hoping that. Uh, potentially Queen's Gamble would sort of reverse the form if they ever come up again. And we were all sort of saying, well, she has to go and back it up again. And um, they obviously skipped Cheltenham and she went to Aintree. Now, the Aintree bumper that she ran in, uh, the Mayor's bumper, she absolutely demolished them. You're talking about 12 lengths back to second and, and she's just, just blew them all away now. To me, that was mega impressive. She's backed up her form in previous runs. And I just think if she takes the hurdles, she's going to go really well. You know, I think she could dominate the Mayor's Novice um, division over in the UK. And then again, you just take your chance in Cheltenham Festival and see what happens at the, the big spring festival. She might not even go to Cheltenham. They might keep her to Aintree, which uh, would obviously be quite interesting. But like I say, she might go a little bit under the radar. But I'm, I'm definitely watching those um, those UK Mayor's Novice races as she comes through the season and progresses along. So I think she's got sort of bags and bags of potential. And uh, and uh, I'm, I think she's really talented, so I'm looking forward to Dysa Enos and the new season. Fergal, good luck with it. 
Right, so my third novice hurdler for this section. Obviously, I like to do four novice hurdlers and three novice chasers and a couple of point to point recruits. So, we're going to keep going on with that, and I'm going to sit still in my chair. <laughs> so, this one's um, one for um, John McConnell. It's a horse called Solo Flight. Now, I quite like this horse. If you if you look back through his form, he's, um, he's placed in a couple of point to points where he comes third and second. Now, if you go back and watch the replays of those point to points, he always looks a little bit outpaced, but he's always the best staying on towards the end. So I'm taking a lot of um, positives from those point to points. And the and um, the one where he comes second, he comes second to a horse for, that's gone to Milton Harris. And that one went for over 200k. So, you know, the form has a little bit of substance now. Again, he, he, um, he come to his rules debut now. He did come fifth, but again, it's one of them where this horse is clearly looking, he's going to go over hurdles and he's looking for a step up in trip. And if you go back and watch the the, the bumper run where he comes fifth, he looks completely outpaced turning in and he gets passed by about four or five and he, he ends up in about 10th position, I think it is. But then again, he comes fifth, he stays on strongly past a load of them horses and, and, and keeps fighting all the way towards the end. Now, to me, you give this horse um, a step up in trip and I think you're going to see the best out of him. And I think he could potentially win a couple of races early on, hopefully uh, a decent-ish price with him not being, obviously not winning previously and being beaten in sort of fifth, beaten well, but staying on strongly out in the back. So that's when I think it's going, going to again go under my favourite saying, under the radar. And I think solo flight for John McConnell. I have put the Albert Bartlett there. If he was, I mean, I'm not saying he's going to go on and win at the festival. It's probably unlikely. But if he was to be targeted at a race, I would have definitely said a big step up in trip to something like the Albert Bartlett would be spot on for him. Lovely. Right, so I'm going to go on to my last novice hurdler. Oh, this one's actually going to be a juvenile hurdler, and it's a French import for Kennelly Alexander, and it's a lovely-looking filly. Now, this horse is obviously going to run in the Running Suckle Colours uh, for Willie Mullins, and I'm I'm really excited for this horse. She looks she looks a real real big talent, and uh, obviously she's going to have a juvenile season. Obviously, uh, Kennelly Alexander had Gala Marcio last season, so I think he's replaced her uh, with a really nice type in Cargis, and uh, she's going to go really well. You know, I saw I dipped into the French recruits a little bit, and, and her French form was really good. She ran in a she ran a she won a, a heavy ground debut at a toy, uh, and she stayed on really strongly and won that. She did come second second time out to a, a decent horse in a horse called Funny Bunny. Now these two um, reposed in a race called it's a Grade Three race called the Pre Sagan, and now Funny Bunny did fall quite early on, but I've said that Kagis, if you watch how she wins the race, she looks headed, she looks beat. But she battles back stronger and goes away again, and she won but going away by a couple of lengths. Now, for me, when I'm looking at horses that are, uh, and, you know, fillies and mares, I want a horse who's going to be able to battle and and stay on strongly. And she did look beat, but she come again and 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 he gave her a couple of taps, and she really she really battled on strong towards the end, and she won going away. And, and to me, that looks like a one with real real potential that can go on to do well at these intermediate mares trips, the two mile fours and things like that. And I think she could be a nice one for the Triumph Hurdle. Obviously, obviously, Triumph Hurdles are way, way too early to be looking at them sort of anti-post markets or anything. If you are looking at the uh, the Triumph Hurdle, because anything can come out at, at these horses when they're sort of age three, three years old and things like that. So I won't be diving in, but it's certainly one I'd be looking forward to watching throughout the season and seeing how she can progress. Because I think she's uh, she's got a big, big potential and she's got a big future ahead of herself personally. I really like her. Car geese, you get her in the tracker, and we'll uh, we'll see when we get her a, a, an appearance from her right so that is my novice hurdlers for this episode i am now going to move on to a few novice chasers although one of the novice chasers in this episode has actually now apparently had the news coming out that they're going to stay over hurdles so i will uh have this one first up and it's a horse called irish point now irish point for rob corn gordon elliott i really like this horse i mean i did earmark him to be going over fences myself but obviously the news broke a, a couple of weeks ago that they're planning on staying over the hurdles. Now, this horse has got some really, really strong form in the book. And if you go back through it, you know, you've got to look at the Royal Bond. He comes second. Well, he won a maiden uh, at Cork early in his career. And the second, only second run, it was straight into the Royal Bond, second ahead to Marine National. Now, I know a few things went wrong for Marine National that day, but to come second and have the likes of Astro Diamond and things like that in behind you just was a really impressive run now. You know, he backed it up second time, uh, third time out, sorry, at Nace again. He was up to in trip to two mile four, and he comes second to a horse called Champ Kylie. Now, a few have been mentioning Champ Kylie 
for uh, going over novice chasing. So I could probably swap that in there, but he is looking like a big step up in trip, a staying novice chaser. So I would definitely say that's still good form there to come second to him. And, you know, he, he come to the Dublin Racing Festival and uh, it, 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 I won't say bombed out, but he didn't, I won't say he performed uh, amazingly well, but it was in the infamous race with Fasal Vega and um, High Definition where they both bombed off at 100 mile an hour and, and the whole race kind of fell apart a little bit and he come fourth in that uh, that race. You know, and it's just one of them, he kind of, that whole race put a complete line through it. And um, he had a bit of a little bit of a, a re, re-prep, I'll say, run at Nace where he was dropped into a, a lower grade handicap and he bought it up at one to four on. But he come to Aintree in the, in the novice hurdle there, up to two mile four, and he was just super impressive. You know, he's absolutely put them away and, and absolutely battered them, to be honest. And it's interesting because I do think longer trips are going to be his cup of tea. And, and obviously now they're going to go over hurdles, Obviously, connections have the likes of Tehupu for the Stayers hurdle, so I do think they may keep them apart, and and potentially Irish Point could be one that's kept for entry. And obviously, the likes of the entry hurdle would you like, would like to think would be his target uh, for later on in the season and the Spring Festival. So, you know, obviously, I do think a Stayers hurdle would suit him, but whether I, I can't see him running both Irish Point and Tehupu in those races. So, obviously, as long as both stay fit, which hopefully they do throughout the whole season. They're going to have a pretty strong hand in those two uh, Spring Festival races at Aintree and Cheltenham. So, yeah, Irish Point for me is another one I'm looking forward to. Lovely. Right, so I've got two more to go, and then I will go through my point-to-point -point recruits. We've had a few of them um, added to the trackers as the episodes have gone along. Uh, and the uh, the next one I'm going to go for uh, in novice chase season is Corbett's Cross for JP and Emmett Mullins. Uh, now, this horse is just a little bit of an enigma, to be honest. If you go back and watch the, his races throughout the season, it's just it's just incredible how versatile this horse seems to be, you know. Um, he won a couple of uh, a couple of early season bumpers. Um, oh, sorry, he won one early season bumper before going straight over hurdles. Now, he'd won races from two mile three all the way up to three mile. And then he had a, a mid-season um, trainer switch over to him at Mullins. And you're thinking, right, he's going to go for go up in trip again. And he dropped him down to two mile uh, in a race at Nace where we're all thinking, what, what is going on? This is some sort of weird training um, um, idea. But, you know, it worked. I think his class just got him got him over the line, to be honest. And he, he beat a horse called Founder 50, which is no mug of a horse. And to do it over two mile, he's jumping with slick and, it, and he just um, stayed strong all the way to the end. And I just think his stamina obviously helped. But the way he was still able to jump really well, at speed down to two mile, I just think showed how versatile he, this horse really is. And, and then obviously we're all a bit up in the air of what race is going to go for at Cheltenham. And, and he went all the way back up in trip to the Albert Bartlett. And uh, we're all thinking, wow, this is just crazy to do run up a two mile race and then go in an Albert Bartlett would be some, um, some, some feat for the horse to do. And uh, unfortunately he did run out coming to the final flight. And I don't think he'd be, uh, it had been winning the race, but he's certainly been there or thereabouts. And uh, he just unlucky. It just got all caught up in a bit of a fiasco. And um, he obviously didn't finish the race. But, you know, he looks a real versatile horse. Now, he could run in a turn as well. But I quite think I think he's going to be a really nice um, brown advisory horse. I think he's going to be a jump quick at, still at those staying trips. And I do think he's, he's going to be for a brown advisory up at the, the three-mile trip. Now, again, you know, he's so versatile. He could run in a turn So we shall see. But... And it's not I'm, not, I'm not one to try and second guess um, Emmett Mullins in his training regime. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what sort of trips he starts out in. Obviously, if he does go chasing, hopefully. And uh, it's certainly going to be one to uh, keep a close eye on. And then come the, the big spring festival, we'll see how he gets on. Yeah, an exciting one uh, to look forward to in uh, Corbett's Cross. I quite like JP. I love JP horses. I love the green and gold. So I'll be looking forward to watching him 100%. Right, so my last novice chaser is going to be one for the Russell and it's a horse called Giovinco now I've seen a few people already speaking about this horse and, and I'm really excited from him as well and I think Lucinda Russell's got a really nice one here and I think he's going to mop up a, quite a few um, races over in the UK uh, but if you go back through again through his form he's a three mile point to point when albeit on his third attempt but he did win it quite well and um, they didn't miss about with bumpers they went straight over hurdles and, and he's had three Pretty pretty decent runs and um, sorry his first two runs over hurdles uh, were, were on heavy ground and he's, he's made all and just just destroyed the fields basically so he obviously goes well on heavy ground won't mind it soft or heavy 
uh, and, and won't mind making the running either. So it's put them away quite convincingly. And, and I think there were rumours they were going to go to Aintree, but they sort of decided to kibosh that idea and, and bring him along a little bit more patiently. And they brought him to a, an obvious hurdle in Perth, uh, stepped him up to three mile. Um, again, you're thinking they're going to make all, but they actually ran him a little bit different this time. I think it was more of an educational ride now. And he was running a little bit more tentatively, sort of mid-pack before before coming to the front and then and again bolting up. Now it weren't it weren't even that favoured in the betting that day. He went off ten to one, which was a bit of a surprise. And he's just absolutely destroyed the field again. You know, travelled all over him and, and pushed him sent out and, and won by a convincing, comfortable twelve lengths. So you're thinking, wow, what a really nice performance. So I do think they've got chasing in mind. That's why they brought him on a little bit more patiently and weren't too bothered about going after any sort of big pot over hurdles. And when you when you kind of know you've got a good one, sometimes it's it's better just to be a little bit more patient and wait for a bigger day down the line. And fingers crossed that's over fences. And like I say, I think Lucinda Russell knows what she's doing with these heavy ground um, chases, and and hopefully he can go on and um, and be an exceptional talent over fences. And I'm excited to see him in his novice uh, novice chase uh, campaign come the new season. Right. <laughs> so yeah, I've f- flown through them. That's four decent novice hurdlers and three well, a hurdler. And two novice chasers, but um, like I say, I want to show about Irish Point, but we shall see how it gets on. Uh, I'm going to finish now with my two point to point recruits um, for the season. And the two I'm going to go with this time is uh, there's a horse called Mount Fuji Park. Now, this horse has gone to John Joe O'Neill. It was a 290k purchase back in uh, February. And uh, I really like this horse. He's by walking the park and he won his he won his point to point by five lengths pretty impressively. Now the ground was good that day and he handled it quite well. But although he's a quite a big unit, looked like maybe softer ground would would um, would he'd appreciate it a little bit more. But he handled the good ground pretty well, and he just looked like he you know he's, he's a big individual, and he was um, he was coming to the final flight. It only it just it looked like he was only just getting going then to be honest, and he jumped it really well. And then once he got into top speed, he was just he just kicked away and, and nothing could could handle his pace. So. I'm really excited to see what what they do with this horse, and I do think he's got um, a lot of raw talent and a lot of a lot of travelling um, travel speed, and I just think he's going to be uh, be able to uh, kick on and have a decent career. I do believe. Um, yeah, he drew away from the second. Who I think is going to be a decent horse as well, so I'd definitely keep them two in the tracker. But I think Mount Fuji Park's one I'm looking forward to. Uh, quite, have, it's, I've, I've had quite a good time to be honest, looking through these points points. Uh, looking through the sales and, and watching the races back and, and seeing where they're all ending up going and the trainers where they're going. And I think a lot of these do get missed, so it's good to quite uh, get a few of these in um, in the trackers. And although we don't maybe don't know have the knowledge as, as much, but once we dive into it, we can pick that knowledge up and, and watch them throughout the careers. And if you can find a good one and they're going to do good things, I think that'd be quite an exciting thing to uh, to be able to achieve. So fingers crossed, we can at least pick a couple of them decent ones out of the point to points. So, yeah, the last one then is a horse called Jinko Blue. Now, this one's gone to Nicky Henderson. And, again, it's a four-year-old gelding. He won his point to point before being sold at the Cheltenham. Uh, sorry, the, the sales back in February again, 225K. And, you know, he's a, he's a nice-looking horse. And he won his point to point. Now, it's a two-mile four furlong point to point. And it was on soft ground. He pulled well clear uh, with the second. And he jumped, he jumped well. And uh, once they once they hit the flat after the final fence, you know he, he kicked on. He was strongest, um, he was strongest at the finish. And I just think he sort of he's related to some decent two mile to two mile four furlong uh, furlong horses. So I think once you get him in over hurdles and chasing, and obviously under the training of Henderson, I think he's going to have a good future ahead of himself. Whether they'll go bumpers, I'm not too sure, or maybe they'll bring him along slowly. It's one of them again. You just got to watch them, keep him in the track and see if they go bumpers or straight over hurdles. But to be fair, with him being a four year old, it probably likely be bumpers early on. Or they might do bumpers and see what see what happens and how he gets on. But you know, I, I do think he's an exciting talent, and I think he's definitely one to keep in the trackers for the future seasons to come. Right, that's it for episode four. <laughs> like I say, thank you very much for watching uh, the series and hitting the like button. And hopefully, you do subscribe and you enjoy it. And like I say, if you leave a comment on any of the horses you think I've gone through, if you've got any opinion on them, if you get any of your own opinions, any horses you think we should be looking at and putting in the trackers, please do leave a comment. And let me know, and, uh, and we'll just keep going. Really, we've got four weeks to go till Chepstow, so there's going to be another four episodes before we obviously have the season opening meeting uh, in, in mid October. So I'm really looking forward to that. Can't wait to get stuck in now. Uh, I've got a lot of other exciting content. Um, we've obviously got the podcast um, 
Uh, we'll have the pod- podcast previews. We're going to have a lot of other different shows. And I've got a lot of other things to come. So keep me on the Twitter for those sort of things. If you really like the jumps racing, and I've got a lot of stuff I'm excited to, to put out there. So fingers crossed you can all enjoy that. And lastly, if you do want the uh, the book that's got all the horses that I'm going through, please do drop me a message and uh, we'll get your donation into the pot for the Veterans Charity. Fingers crossed we can continue to raise some good money uh, and give a big pot to them on come Chepstow weekend. Right, so that's me for episode four. It's obviously going to be early this week, so I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, I will see you again next time. Goodbye and thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs>